Have you ever found yourself searching for your one clear purpose? What if it isn't just one thing? Today's guest will tell us how her purpose is found in many places, and she turns fear into her greatest ally. Have you ever felt like there's something more you're supposed to be doing with your life, but you're not sure what? Welcome to She Made It, the podcast that uncovers the journey to living a life that feels more like you. I'm your host, Elle Zimmerman, and I'm here with my co-host, Clara. Yay! Hi, Elle. Really happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, this is a great interview. Today's guest is Taryn Kinnebrew. She's the owner of Sweet Petite Desserts and most recently, Cream and Sugar Coffee. I knew you'd like this one, Clara. Taryn is a third-generation baker, and after serving in the National Guard, she worked as an analyst in corporate America, but then went back to her roots and opened a bakery in downtown Cincinnati. I love that. And I am really excited for this episode as a big fan of all things dessert and pastries. That's right. So I was thinking about this episode and Taryn has such a wide variety. But then I got to thinking, how can you pick just one? So and that's what I love about it is that they're they're these tiny treats. But if you had to pick your favorite, Clara, what would it be? It is really hard. I love anything really dark chocolate. So like a dark flourless chocolate cake is really yummy. I love cupcakes, but you make a great point. Since all of her treats are really tiny, that means that you do not have to just pick one, which I love. And I'm kind of surprised. I thought you might pick the pumpkin because you love pumpkin too. Yeah, I do. I actually just made pumpkin bread last night so (laughs) and had it for breakfast this morning. So (laughs) you're on to me. (laughs) Yeah, Taryn's conversation was really great. She really opened up about her faith. She's a woman of really deep faith. And I had the pleasure of meeting her several years ago. Um, I coached her for a pitch competition as part of Aviatra Accelerators. She was just preparing to launch her brick and mortar business. So I really can't wait to share this with all of you. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it too. So I would love to welcome Taryn. Thank you so much. Yeah, it has been a little, it has been a few years ago and so much has happened in that amount of time. And over the last decade, as I always say, I spent a decade building this business. Yeah. And you and I met, you were in the business accelerator. It was called Bad Girl Ventures at the time, but you were already a business owner. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, I had already had my business. Uh, I think it was about three years old when I joined Bad Girl. Mm -hmm. And did you have the brick and mortar at that time? I didn't. So the um, one of the main reasons why I um, decided to go through the accelerator was to help with funding, um, to be able to get some non traditional funding. um, Because as you probably know, it's sometimes hard for women to get um, financial help through a bank. And so I needed to get creative and figure out a non-traditional way of doing that. And then just also kind of tweak uh, my business and see where I was lacking. And um, obviously Bad Girl helped with that. Yeah. And you... um you have a very interesting background because you didn't come from a life of entrepreneurship. As I read in your um, bio, you actually served in the Army National Guard and you were in really into like, I guess I would call it pretty structured corporate America. That is so true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were in... Yes, yeah, um, so... Um- Go ahead, Elle. I was just going to say, you. I think it was IBM you were working for. So between the military and and IBM technology, um, what was that like to switch from that into entrepreneurship? Yeah. So, I mean, it is very interesting. So I, I always like to say that my life is an adventure um, and it is definitely a journey, one that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Enjoyed. Um, I would say that I'm a risk taker and a woman with her glass half full. So 
Um, joining the armed forces was um, a bit of a dream that I wanted wanted to do. I had some very strong military women um, in my family, and you know it was just an avenue for me to seek a different adventure as opposed to going right to college when I graduated from high school. So I did go the year that I graduated from high school and. Um, you know, it was it was a great experience. I, I definitely would do it again. Um, I actually, you know, tell people that doing boot camp is easier than being an entrepreneur, right? So, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and and so, um, you know, with that, obviously, I learned how to be a team player for sure, and um, to protect and serve my country, but most importantly, have a lot of disciplines put in place and. So that has um, obviously carried me through my entrepreneurship journey. Then there, um, I decided to actually go to school and figure out what I wanted to do. I have always been a numbers person. I love math. Um, but I didn't want to just be, I didn't want to be an engineer. I didn't want to do like accounting. And so uh, working for IBM was, was a, um, huge opportunity and what ended up happening and what changed the traje trajectory of my life was I ended up getting laid off from IBM in 2002, um, the top of 2002 after 9-11. And so after that, you know, I just really it started to think about what is the thing that will make me happy and the thing that made me happy was baking you know I was raised you know with a family that always cooked that always baked um, I learned how to bake from my grandmother so that was our thing to do and I just really thought that this is what families do and lo and behold did I find out that a lot of families didn't do the same things that I did it was never up for discussion. I never talked about this with like friends or anything like that. Um, you know, most of, most of the people that I surrounded myself with were very family oriented, but I just really thought that this is what families did. And so when I decided to explore that from a, just from having a conversation with a friend of mine, uh, I did it, you know, I was like, you know what, that would be a fun thing. This is something that I already do. Let's see. And I just took a risk and I haven't looked back. And that was in. Well, it says here that it was like 2008, 2009. I lose you. Yes. 2009. And I have not looked back since. And what, what I find so fascinating is that you, your history up to this point has been greatly influenced by like national issues. Like, for example, you said 9-11 changed yeah. the course and then you open a business right on the heels of the economic downturn of 2008. And we're going to, as we get further into your story, we're going to talk about a new business you just opened right in the middle of the pandemic. So I guess, I don't, not that I want to ask for any more like global economic downturns, but it sounds like that's part of the key to your uh, path here. You know what? And I think we just had an aha moment because I had not even thought about that. But yeah. I think we are on to something. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask you a question. Now, I, I just love your story. And when I was doing a little bit of my, you know, I love to learn about my guests and do a little digging and see what I can find interesting about them. And on your website, you because on She Made It, we talk a lot about the resistances, the challenges that we have as women you know, as we lean into a f our fully expressed self or to our, you know, entrepreneurial side, our creative side. And you hit something really strongly in this little buried page on your website. And it talks about fear. And it says, how many of you are faced with fear? Do you allow fear to paralyze or motivate you? 
And you say, I am sharing my story of how fear almost paralyzed me into not following my purpose. And you wrote a book, and it says, 18 Powerful Lessons on Living Your Best Life on the Other Side of Fear. So you know I want to hear some of those 18 lessons. (laughs) Yeah, because you don't, you you have these huge, um, you know, where the word pivot is used a lot in these, you know, in these times of COVID, but you have major pivots in your story. You have taken right turns, 360 turns, and then you go from this structured corporate life, secure, you know, probably good benefits, all of that into a family, like you said, like a generational sort of. I guess, passion or talent to leap into entrepreneurship. So I'm guessing that in all of those changes, you had to face your fear. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, so it's going to be, so this is interesting. When I look at fear, I don't so much look at it as being afraid to not do something. I really look at it as being afraid um, to see what's like, it's like, you got to do it. Like I have to see what's on the other side. So it forces me or it pushes me to move forward. Um, and I know a lot of times when we hear, you know, about fear, you know, people are afraid to move forward. They're afraid, um, you know, what if they fail, you know, so it's always on the negative kind of, um, end of things. But for me, it's always like, no, I got to see what's on the other side. Um, Because I'm such a curious person that, you know, I'm just curious to see like, what would really happen? And I always to myself, this is in any and everything that I've ever done. You know, I was like, the worst case scenario is that I would have to do X, Y, or Z. So for example, if Sweet petite had not worked out. The, the worst case scenario it would have been I would just have to go and find a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I'm like, I have nothing to lose because I'm starting with essentially, you know, nothing. There's nothing on the line except that I tried. And so, you know, I just tell people to turn that fear into motivation as opposed to keeping you from doing something. Because we all know that, you know, we can drive ourselves crazy thinking like, if I had just done that, if I had just done, you know, if I had just only done that, I wonder what would have happened. And so in my case, I'm like, I'm going to see what's going to happen. So that's really fascinating. So In your description, you say, I'm sharing my story of how fear almost paralyzed me into not following my purpose. I had to literally sit and ask myself the question, what are you going to do? Are you going to give in to it or are you going to keep going? And I, and I believe as I, as fear was brought to me and the more I, you know, pushed past the fear it got easier to make the decision that I cannot let it stop me from fulfilling my ultimate purpose. Mm -hmm. And so each phase brought about different purposes at that time. And um, yeah. And so I really just kind of go into that, into, into the book, into the chapter that I wrote and just to kind of bring people, you know, Fast forward to how I ended up becoming an entrepreneur, because like you, you know, I didn't have an example of an entrepreneur. It wasn't even, first of all, it wasn't even on my radar. And to then now be where I am after 10 years, it's like, how in the world did you do that? And it's, you have to keep going. You have to conquer that which is put before you so that you can reach the next thing. Well, and I love that you frame it as, it's not about what am I going to lose? It's about what might I miss if I don't push through my fear? Absolutely. And how much can you actually gain by doing that? I mean, we know that through life, you know, there's so many life lessons and gosh, only know, I mean, 
you can only imagine how many life lessons I have learned, but um, <laughs> we have to give ourselves credit that we are capable of getting over things. It, and it's not to say that there weren't challenges, you know, um, along the way where I, I, you know, I had to just kind of take a moment, you know, but we're stronger than what we give ourselves credit for. And so I do really try to rely wholeheartedly on my inner strength Mm -hmm. and just keep going and keep sharing with people. Like you just have, you, you can do it. You can, you can do it. So I have a question. I have two questions. One thing you said that was really interesting is you said that as I moved into the next phase of my purpose, And that's really interesting because I think people are always seeking their life purpose. Like, what's my purpose? What's the plan? And you look at it from the way you described it as changing. Yes. Do you feel that way? Yeah. I mean, it's growth. I think, um, you know, because so many people struggle with that and they get stressed out about you know, like you just stated, what's my life purpose? Well, I think it's over time you learn what that is as you get older. I mean, I can certainly tell you, gosh, um, my purpose now is to really serve people and to be here for, for people. Like to really just, part of it is to be a listening ear um, and also to help them to overcome the ability to feel like they can't do something. And I know that that is from me, from me learning how to have done that over, especially being an entrepreneur over the last 10 years. Now, 10 years before that, you know, when I look back, I could say, you know, my purpose um, at that time was really to be a mom. Like that has when does that end? Exceeded everything. <laughs> like, but I think, you know, well, it never ends, but you know, <laughs> they, they, they gain, um, independence and the more independence they gain, I feel like we kind of get pieces of ourselves back because we give so much to our children that we kind of lose our way, if you will, or we sacrifice a lot. And so I think, you know, over time we do like, I'm so, I I feel like personally, I'm such a uh, better person now with her being 18 as I was 18 years ago when I knew nothing. Right. So, um, yeah, I, you know, and I do appreciate every decade that I've gone through. And when I reflect on that, you know, I look at myself you know, being 20, oh my gosh, I would love to have that 20 year old energy, um, (laughs) being able to just explore all these things. Obviously now I'm a whole lot wiser and I'm like, you know, you can recognize red flags and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. And I agree. I agree with that, that the, it's like the pieces of yourself start to come back. Our kids, I have three, I have a 19. Yeah. Another, and I I also have a 17 year old and a 16 year old. So I'm, I'm very much similar to kind of where you are with the age of your daughter. Um, I have a question though, about something else you said, because, um, first of all, I love your perspective on fear and I love that it's, it's not, you know, it's that perspective of, again, you, you even introduced kind of your concept of life as the cup half full. It's the, you know, fear for you is almost a positive thing to prompt you to move forward. But you did talk about, you said about you rely on your inner strength. So in our heads, you know, and I talk with women all the time and they say, you know, I know I have this fear. I know I need to overcome it. And intellectually, analytically, they get it. But that inner strength, that confidence, that ability to actually push through the fear either isn't there, hasn't been developed. I guess what would you what would you say gives you inner strength? And if you would look, maybe if you look back at the younger you, what kind of advice would you give someone who maybe doesn't feel they have that power yet? 
Yeah. So it, well, I will tell you, um, for me, it is, it is, definitely my faith in God. Um, I rely, I have relied on God in the power of prayer and just being before our creator, because it says that we were created in his image. And so knowing that and having learned that, that in, in and of itself, speaks volumes. Now, it's not to say that I think of myself as a God, but if God, if God created me and he made me in his image, then, oh my gosh. Then I lights just, out, right? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I am just one person out of many. And he has done this very same thing for every um, individual person. And so I do, um, respect and give reverence to that. And so when I, you know, but I do realize too, that there's even in that, that there are so many things that I have to learn. And so when I am faced with challenges and difficult moments and things like that, I am always asking God, what am I supposed to learn from this? Most of the time I get an answer and some of the time I don't, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Right. And it was just a lesson to be learned. And so, you know, I do, you know, I'm very active in my church. I do read my Bible. I do pray. I, so I do really rely on the strength of God. Yeah. And what I will say, the power of that has gotten me through some very difficult moments. Um, And what I mean by that is because I know that he is with me. And even though I am going through a storm, he he has given me a sense of peace um, when I'm having to go through, you know, weather a storm. And, and that to me is very powerful because most of the time when we're faced with difficult moments, Um, It can be very stressful to the point of, you know, it can cause health issues or it can cause you to like mentally lose your mind. You know, all these things can happen to you. And he has given me the strength to just, I'm like, God, I need your peace. I need your strength. I need you to show me the direction in which I should go. And I will tell you, I have been very blessed um, immensely. Um, I could not have ever done this business without him. And there have been many difficult things that I've had to deal with. And I didn't share them with anyone because I knew that for me, the only way that I would see the, um, see a result was to pray. It wasn't, talking to a person or even my husband. And I would tell him like, just pray for me. You know, it's not that I didn't want him to know, but it was just, you, you cannot fix this, you know, and husbands like to fix things. At least mine does. He (laughs) likes to be the fixer. And, And as much as I appreciate that, I'm like, no, I need to learn the lesson and I need to really hear from God what lesson or lessons do I need to learn from this? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I really really appreciate that because you're saying that you're not doing it alone, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. And um, I give all of everything that I have been able to accomplish. And I believe all the doors that have been open for me, all of the connections that I've been able to make has been by his power. It has been nothing of my own at all whatsoever. I have just been, um, I I try to just listen very closely to him. Do I always hear? No, I don't. But I do try to have that listening ear and, and, and really carry that with me everywhere that I go Mm, and allow that to be my foundation. Um, Even when, you know, starting a coffee shop, I, you know, I ask God, like, should I be doing this? 
you know, is this my next thing? Mm -hmm. So anything that I do, um, all of the decisions that I make, for the most part, I'm consciously asking, should I be doing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, Taryn. Thank you for thank you for being so honest and being open about that. Because I think that, um, you know, inner strength, dealing with fear, those are big, big issues for women. And I just appreciate that that transparency about that. I, I do have a question about. What because you kind of started talking a little bit about the family, the, your history of baking, how your grandmother baked. It was kind of just built into your the way you, you the way your family did stuff, but you didn't realize that others didn't. What I find so fascinating is that you were in this very again we talked about the real structured military, the corporate. But how the heck did you go from the numbers, the military? to baking because just because your family did it doesn't necessarily mean that that's your next thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. So it was, um, it was a very, um, <laughs> it was a very interesting thing. So I, um, I had a dinner, um, with, it, it actually was a group of us that had dinner and me and a young lady, um, we had kind of, was having like a side conversation. And at that time, candy tables was like all the rage, right? And that was her thing. And so we were talking and I just was sharing with her like how much I love baking, you know, that's my thing to do, you know, so forth and so on. And so she said to me, uh, Taryn, you should think about selling your desserts. And I'm like, what? I mean, I really looked at her like she had like five heads, right? And I'm like, are you crazy? And she was like, no, I really think you should really think about it. And so anyways, it like settled in me. Um, I kind of, you know, went away from that dinner, you know, it was a great dinner. And then my husband and I ended up taking this trip, an anniversary trip out to San Diego to visit um, one of my cousins and her husband. And she, so she's a big dessert person. And so she had, you know, they had made like all these plans um, for us to do. And so one of the places that they took us was a dessert restaurant. So if you can imagine um, Cheesecake Factory and it's nothing but desserts and drinks. So they specialize like in cocktails and desserts. And I was so like fascinated yeah. with the idea of people just going to a restaurant to eat dessert and to have cocktails. And I am such a people watcher, by the way. And so <laughs> I'm watching these people and I am just in awe, but the desserts were absolutely phenomenal. The, the craftsmanship was amazing. And uh, it, it just, it, and I just started, it really started resonating like in my spirit. And so I did, I went to God, I said, what is this? What, <laughs> what, what are you, <laughs> right. where, First of all, he sends some friend to like just put yeah. a little thought in your ear, and then you end up in San Diego, and you're like, "Wait a minute, what yes. you doing here?" I'm like, it is, "This is so <laughs> bizarre," and I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "This is totally out of left field." This is, and you're asking, and you're telling, and, and it's like you're telling me to do this, and I have no like idea how to even start a business, right? Wow. So, I am not kidding you. I was um, sitting in the airport. And it was like, literally, God just started downloading everything to me. I have the napkin to this day where I wrote down the name of the business, what the concept was going to be. Um, I had to come up with the desserts just because my grandmother had since passed away. Um, and I, I didn't have any of her recipes because when she and I baked, literally, this woman baked from memory. She had wow. nothing written down which I thought was freaking amazing. And, <laughs> um, and so I was like, Oh my gosh, you know what? And so I, and so then it was like, he showed me me. So, and what I mean by that, he was, he, he showed me how much I had already had, you know, it was like, you can do this. You have the discipline, you have the business knowledge, um, you know the how to build sales. the sales, <laughs> how to build the website. And I am wow. not kidding you. 
in 30 days. I did it all. I did my research. I put together recipes. I did tastings. Um, Taryn, I, I love like, that. When I tell it was, my husband was like, oh my God. I'm like, you, this is a, an outer body experience for me. <laughs> that is crazy. So it's when you're so sitting at the crazy. airport, did the did, did the name Sweet Petite Desserts was that the name? It, that's that was the wow. name. Wow, it was so scary. Like it was scary, but it was invigorating at the same time. And I'm like, wow, my whole life just came full circle. Wow, it was. So did that did that kind of thing happen to you often? I mean, that sounds very. Like, I want to, like, sit next to you. <laughs> I want to, like, hold your hand and see if the circuits fly to my brain. What? Like, um, kind well, I will say this. It kind of does. I mean, I have, like, my moments. Like, when I had to, when we talked about pivoting, when I had to um, pivot my business, um, that happened to me again. And the only bad thing about it, though, is that I haven't completely did the thing that I needed, that I need to, to complete it out. And it's a timing thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but it was the same thing, you know, it's like, so what th that thing is, since I'm talking about it, was to do um, live baking classes and mm -hmm. do online baking classes, because that is one of um, the pieces of my business that is very profitable. And so um, I started to do that. And, and now I have clients and people who want to do this. And it was like, literally, God just, I mean, I like woke up one day, and he was like, you say you want to have your own show, what are you waiting on? Like, mm -hmm. you just need to do it. And I said, you know what? And I said, you're absolutely right. And I did, I did like four classes live um, over a span of six weeks. And I had to pause it only because we opened up the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And, but now I'm getting, I have gotten a whole lot of inquiries about it. And so I'm having to try and figure out how to uh, make this work. Mm -hmm. And it's so that it's successful. You know, I don't want to just randomly do something. And so now I'm, I'm literally in prayer about it. Like, God, I need you to really just help me figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's a, there's a need for it. And, and I miss it. Like I really miss teaching these classes. So, so yeah. Yeah. So Taryn, when you get this download and it's coming, what stops you from second guessing that? Cause I, I know it's him. I, I mean, I know his voice. I know God's voice well enough to know that it's him. Mm -hmm. telling me to do it like because it's been so many moments um over a span of 10 years of doing entrepreneurship like I know it's his voice telling me to do it have you ever um, have you ever done something that either you knew you were it wasn't in the plan I have um so I have and not that it was a disaster it was just I had to think, think, look at the situation differently and think of things differently. So um, it's not to say that I don't make plans and they don't get altered because they do. It's um, recognizing, okay, so I need to do it this way. So, you know, it's like, I may get an idea, like he may say, I may get like, some crazy thought, right? And then I'm like, but how am I supposed to do that? Now, God doesn't always <laughs> answer, right? I'm like, he doesn't always answer. And he doesn't always answer right away because it could be something that needs to wait. Like yeah. uh, there's some lessons that I need to learn along the way, but it's it's almost like I'm planting the seed for now, but now isn't the time to do it. And so when I can't get a clear answer on something, I instinctively know I need to pause that idea, but not, but not um, throw it away. Mm -hmm. Just sit on it, let it marinate, and then wait because it's it's going to happen probably eventually. It's just a matter of timing. Mm -hmm. So there's also this real. I mean, I would say that there's 
also just a confidence in your knowing. You know, mm-hmm. you 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 trust yourself. Yes. And you trust yourself kind of to when you know like to know i guess yeah and i think that is a skill that you have to learn right um it's like what we what we um, refer to as a gut feeling Mm -hmm. Um, you have to know like it's like it just feels right Mm -hmm. um and and it's i mean i know it can sound because people will say to me well how do you know it's god does he like say it no, I don't hear some audible voice or anything like that. It just comes comes in different ways. It could be um, like a person t- saying something to me or something I've been thinking about. And um, I just keep running into this thing. Either I keep reading about it or it just keeps popping up. It keeps showing up in different ways. And sometimes it is like almost like... Um, it's like it's in my heart of hearts. Like I mm-hmm. feel it so strongly. So, but it is a confidence thing. But then the thing that I have to say to you is by nature, I am such an introvert that I really love spending time with myself. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, I don't get to do that as much. So when I have those moments of retreating and not having to, have conversation or be around people, I do take that time to really try and um, really meditate and really like think about all of the things that I'm doing because sometimes we're just busy for the sake of being busy. I'm over that. I, I'm no longer that person. Yeah. I, I really spend my time wisely and I really take on like projects and things that really mean something and have purpose and that are going to make people better. So it has, it's a maturity thing. I think, um, you know, if we listen to ourselves and if we pay attention to the things that we give out, you know, put out into the universe, uh, then you you figure out, oh, okay, this is what I need to be focused on. And this is what I don't need to be focused on. So, yeah. So it's some, it's, it's, I love how you like to spend time alone. It's kind of like time alone, time with God. And then it's, yeah. and then it's, you, you know, you use the word maturity. I think it's also the practicing, the trusting. And then it's like it builds on itself. The more we, yeah. the more we act on that and the more we are reinforced, I think the louder that knowing, the louder that voice becomes too. And we, and we become more aware of those. You, ta- you, you, know, you talked about those moments where you, you start to see things or you hear things and those synchronicities become more obvious to us too. Absolutely. I would love, yeah. I, as we sort of start to wrap up here, before we go, I definitely want you to tell me about your newest venture. It's adorable. I've looked at the pictures. I actually have... Um, my assistant, Clara, she is like the podcast producer. We were talking about you and she got so excited when she realized that um, Cream and Sugar is your new coffee shop because she's had several friends like messaging her, taking Instagram stories from the shop. So the buzz is out. So tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, it's so it's such a blessing. Um, so yeah, so it's myself and uh, one of my good friends, who I have known since high school, we decided to partner up and do a business. Um, I had actually approached her and I and I said to her, it's time for us to do something together. It's time. And she actually has been in love with the the um, location of our coffee shop because it's in the neighborhood where she lives, and so we went to check it out. And we we were both coffee shop lovers; like we just like going to just different coffee shops. Um, and so we went there, and it just felt right. It felt magical. We could totally see ourselves there, um, and we could we could totally envision um, bringing a community together that one needed a coffee shop um, it, because the space was previously a coffee shop, but it had been closed down for about a couple of years. 
And so we were able to, you know, make the relationship and get the coffee shop back open, obviously under new ownership and a new name. And um, we just changed the decor of it. And so what we wanted the premise of the coffee shop to be was a healthier option when it comes to coffee shops. So all of our food that we serve is plant-based. And um, there are some sweet petite desserts. So we're not, it's not a strict menu in that way. You know, we want to be able to kind of put our spin on it from me being part owner and having some of my desserts there. And then Crystal actually owns a spa. So it is a very relaxing space. Um, The colors in the shop are shades of blue. We have a very good vibe. There is a lounge in the back. And so it's all about like total healing. Mm -hmm. We want you to come and enjoy good music, have a great meal, work if you need to meet with friends or coworkers, um, but also be very inviting and very relaxing. And I think we were able to pull it off. Yeah, I can't. I've not been there, but I can't wait. I do have a question. Did you... um... I know that this opened right smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. Was it already in the works? Yeah. So we were supposed to open in March and um, right, like literally we were supposed to open the week that the governor shut down, like when everything was shut down. Wow. We, so we had had our soft opening And we kind of saw it coming. And so we decided to pull the plug on it to see what was going to happen. And we were happy that we did. So it was crazy Um, what we ended up doing before the the, the, um, city was completely shut down. We was able to bag all of our coffee and get rid of that. But we we did have to kind of throw out some food and things like that. But I mean, not, not a whole lot of waste, but... Um, we ended up having to let our full staff go because, you know, we couldn't pay them or anything. And we didn't, we had no idea how long this would last. So when the governor started to open things back up, we decided, Hey, we're going to pull the plug. We're going to open, see what happens. And we did, we opened up on June 6th, that first Saturday. And, um, it's been full steam ahead. We haven't looked back. I mean, it was so crazy the day that we opened. Um, We ended up having to stay open an hour later because we literally had a line from the time before we opened until an hour after we opened. I think that's fantastic. Congratulations. That's awesome. When I tell you, we had every emotion and couldn't even really because of course we were everybody's masked up and you know we had to keep people social distance and all of that stuff but it has just been absolutely amazing we have our regulars we've done some um, amazing things since we've been open so I and, think- and Taryn Taryn what was that date again that you opened we opened on June 6th okay because I was just um you know I I remember seeing on Instagram, um, you know, George Floyd's murder was on May 25th. So you're talking like just a couple weeks after that. Yeah. Yeah. And you were right in the heart of Over the Rhine where the protests were most active. So what in the world was that like? You've got that going on at your one location. You've got the joy and the celebration in the new location. It was a very interesting time. I, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't, so Sweet Petite was not open at all. I didn't even reopen Sweet Petite until I kind of started taking some orders the top of June. Um, just because I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait it out, see what's happening. Um, I actually ended up having to have my space boarded up, although nothing happened to my space in particular, but it was just highly recommended that I board it up so that no damage would happen to it. Um, But, you know, I just was like, again, when I tell you I had so much peace during that time with 
you know, I just said, really, I just said to God, I said, if anything crazy happens to the space, I'm done. Mm. Like this was going to be my out. Like I'm, I'm done. I'm, I won't, you know, I won't rebuild. I'm not, cause I don't want to have to, that, that was just in my mind going to be too much. Mm-hmm. And, um, thankfully enough, no harm happened since we've been back open. It's been insane, crazy. Like, I'm, I've just been busy on both ends. It's mm-hmm. been nonstop. And so um, it's been very disheartening. Obviously, we're having to deal with all of the racism and all of, you know, all of this stuff. But people have just showed and showed so much love and kindness and generosity towards both businesses mm-hmm. that I know we I mean, I know that it's the hand of God mm-hmm. for, without a shadow of a doubt, because. I'm looking at, you know, obviously I'm very aware of the restaurant industry, right? And small businesses, so many businesses have closed, they won't recover. I am very fortunate. I am very blessed. And I do not take it for granted, not Mm -hmm. even for one day. Yeah. And I do want to just share with our listeners, because I was so incredibly touched by the vision um, behind Cream and Sugar And is it okay if I just read what's on your website? Yeah, absolutely. Our vision is to change the business landscape of African-American communities, to spread love and and inclusion, to inspire creativity, to enhance the business district, and more importantly, to have our children see people who look like them owning and operating thriving businesses. I just love that. It really, really touched me. And you are like living that. And the fact that this coffee shop is showing such success, obviously, the community is reciprocating that vision. So it so congratulations to you. And then you take it a step further, because you mentioned that, you know, as you as your businesses have matured, as you've matured yourself as a business owner, that now it's about giving back. And with the coffee shop, you have this really cool internship program. You offer entrepreneurship internships. And I know even with Sweet Petite, you have the junior baking series. And so you are walking the talk. And I just, yeah, so just just so inspirational. And um, yeah, that's Thank big. you so much. Thank you, because we do, I don't smell the roses often enough, and um, to hear you say that, I it just makes me think this is my life, and I am grateful. But this is this is what I was purposed to do, and um, I just get to continue to inspire and live it every day, and share it with any and everyone that comes into contact with me. So. That in and of itself, just it, that just makes me happy. Yeah. Thank you, Taryn, so much for sharing your story, your heart. As my last question, um, what I love to ask my guests is if you were going to speak to the younger version of you, what advice would you give her? Gosh, the younger version of me. And I love my younger self too, by the (laughs) way. (laughs) I did because, and I'm going to tell you why, because she was fierce and, um, and she just lived her life. And I would just tell her, you have a bright future ahead of you. Just keep going and don't let anyone stop you because um, I see that same light in my daughter. And when I tell you, gosh, to watch her blossom, it's, you know, I, I, this is my saying, I, I tell people I deal with myself daily and my daily is my daughter. And so, um, if she becomes, I just see even greater things from her. And if and knowing that I had a little bit to do with that, man, that just makes me so proud. That's awesome. Thank you, Taryn. Thank you so Thank much. You. And if people want to follow you or check out your, your locations, what's the best way to do that? 
Yeah, so they can find me on all social media outlets um, at Sweet Petite Desserts and then also at Cream and Sugar Coffee House. Awesome. And we'll put all those links in the show notes too so people can check it out. Thanks, Taryn. Thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Wow, I loved that episode with Taryn so much, and I really loved her perspective on fear. It made me think of a quote that was on my calendar when I was a kid in my room, and it said, don't be afraid that your life will end. Be afraid that it will never begin. And I just, I think that's such a helpful concept to, okay, if you're feeling afraid, think about how scary it would be if you didn't do the thing that you're thinking about doing or didn't take the risk or didn't live the life you want to live. And I think that the way that Taryn talked about that was just such a powerful example of that concept, which I loved. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, you know, what I love about what we do on She Made It is, you know, often people tell their stories, but I loved how Taryn was willing to get right into the heart. You know, when I asked her the question about, okay, what is inner strength? Where does that come from? She was so willing to be so real about where that comes from for her. And those are the that, those are the ways we learn and we grow from other women's stories. Um, so I'm just so grateful for her willingness to share with us. Yeah, completely. If you... My dear listeners, love Taryn's story. If there's something that really inspired you, we would love to hear it. We'd love for you to comment. You can always leave a review the way we get our listeners to grow and and more inspiration passed through the world is by reviews. So Yeah, and I'll just add that the best place to do that is on Apple Podcasts. You can do it either on the iTunes app on your computer or through the app on your phone. I'm so grateful you joined us for today's episode. I bet you're here because you know there's something more for your life. Whether you're moving into something creative or letting go in order to take that next creative step, I have something for you. My free guide to graceful transitions. You can find it at lzimmerman.com backslash transitions. And remember, if she made it, you can too.